Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So, FOMC last night came out relatively um, bullish. Um, still, obviously, no interest rate hike, but uh, many people still pointing to September as being a potential um, time for that next U.S. interest rate hike. And uh, the U.S. dollar has certainly uh, gone a little bit higher in the last uh, in the last couple of hours. So, again, cable, euro dollar, dollar yen is making some decent advances. Um, like basically data dependency is still the order of the day and the data is coming out as good. Now today we've actually got a big piece of US data, you've got GDP um, coming out later on the session, we'll come back to that in a second, but that is going to be quite an important um, kind of additional driver as to measurement of the strength of the US economy and when those rates are actually going to come out. And we also have a big week next week, um, and also this week as well for US earnings. There's a huge host of uh, major bellwether stocks all reporting. And um, through various tax breaks and uh, the stronger US dollar, some of them have, have, have kind of struggled, but those tax break elements have, have, have helped them still post some decent profits. So um, some clever accounting going on with a lot of these US um, earnings, but um, they're not as bad as potentially has been feared. So looking at the U US therapy, we have a dealish, uh, decent amount of um, of bullish momentum yesterday. Not a huge amount of follow through today, but looking at the intraday charts on my other screen here, it is grinding higher. Uh, with the Germany 30 and the UK 100 all moving up in tandem. Now we're trading below both moving averages here. We've almost got a bullish crossover on the MACD. Um, the other technicals are relatively neutral. So certainly now that we have gotten above 17,747, which was the, tips, the tip of the bottom end of this candle here in April, um, it does give us a little bit of a springboard for the next move up, which would be towards 18,112. Um, but we need to get some follow through now, and um, it needs to get moving. Maybe today's GDP figure um, will, will help out. And as you can see, the GDP figure is due at 1.30 UK time. Uh, and um, the one you're wanting to look at, actually, is this one here, the advanced one, so 2.6 2 um, is the forecast. There's quite a large number of other um, uh, figures on here, but 2.6, uh, 2.7 is what is expected for the GDP, and it'll be interesting to see how that how that one pans out. So then moving from, from that and uh, moving out onto the UK 100, um, you can see we're making uh, kind of broader advances versus the, versus the uh, UK 100, uh, versus the US 30. Um, a break just getting above that uh, 21 period SMA, which is great. Uh, we're getting closer to 66.86 as well as the next potential um, resistance level. Um, if we manage to break and close above that, that would open up 67.71, which would also be quite close to the 55 period SMA. Bullish cross on the MACD. Basically, looking at this, the UK 100 looks to be well positioned. Should it get above 66.86 um, to, uh, to to make some decent um, gains? Um, but obviously, it depends how things go with the US today. That GDP figure isn't just going to impact the, U the US markets. It, it could be a, a massive driver for the UK 100 as well. And bear in mind that this market of ours has come come down a lot more um, because of our big exposure to uh, to commodities. Um, with BP and Shell actually both coming out with statements today saying that they are buckling down the hatches and uh, essentially they are preparing themselves for prolonged depressed oil prices and um, like uh, West Texas crude was down as low as about 46 as a few days ago it was currently at about 48.5 uh, on uh, per crude oil inventory data that came out yesterday it isn't a lot lower than what was expected but as we discussed a lot during these sessions uh, with Iran coming back onto into the global uh, economy uh, and slow down in China and everything else, I think there's going to be just a lot of pressure on um, crude prices and you factor in a bit of a stronger US dollar, that's not going to help either. So um, still making some decent gains towards the top end of the, of the range already this morning, 66.86 is the potential level to be aware of. So quickly moving on to Japan to do five. So it's getting a benefit from that dollar yen uh, push higher. It's currently at 124 spot 17. Uh, and uh, 20,868 is going to be that potential resistance to watch out for. So things are still looking interesting there. Um, slow stochastic on the on Japan to do five is giving a sell signal, but I think the fundamentals would push higher. And as you can see there, look at the dollar yen, 124.42. So here's breaths away. 
I would get a break and close above that, we'll be looking at 126 as the next potential resistance. And that that would be kind of interesting because um, I think there's maybe limited upside to, a little bit of weakness, sorry, to the Japanese yen when there's still a lot of this uncertainty and everything else going on. So if we can get above 124.42, that'll be interesting. 126, that's a big ask, but you never know. So moving on to West Texas crude, as you can see, the rebound uh, capped at potential broken support now acting as resistance at 49.40. Uh, and we've already started to uh, dip down a little bit this morning. Tips of these candles are indicative of that of that selling pressure as well. So um, this is the level to watch out for, regardless if you're if you're bullish or bearish on this uh, on this product. Uh, it's not broken it yet, so we'll see how things go. So gold, gold obviously got hit quite hard last night. Well, actually not even last night. It's getting hit hard this morning, and I would probably be a bit more confident to say now that we are getting that symmetrical triangle formation that we talked about. Let me just very quickly just draw something on here just to see how it looks. Um, and remember that a symmetrical triangle formation is usually a continuation pattern. So the bias is for continuation. So we've seen a break lower. So the onus, the bias could be on a break lower. But certainly until we break down below the tips of these candles, uh, you would never trade normally within the, within the actual pattern itself. So very quickly moving on to your dollar and GBP USD, you can see your dollar's reversed reverse course that FOMC last night, really giving a shot in the arm for the, for the US dollar. Uh, other technicals neutral, almost got a uh, bearish cross on the MACD, lowering histogram, trading below both moving averages, next potential support, one spot 0786. So finishing up there on GBP USD because UK data has been pretty good as well, right? So we get a strong FOMC, we get a decent GDP from the US later on today potentially. How does that counterbalance against the UK GDP figures which are also quite strong? Well, you can see yesterday, this is a graveyard doji formation right here. So uh, we were a lot higher, got pushed all the way back down. From a technical perspective, that's a real ugly candle to have. So. I think, you know, if we get a really strong US GDP figure, or if it comes in at 2.7, and that's a forecast, um, then, you know, the dollar is going to continue to, to make advances, even though the sterling is actually looking pretty decent. Uh, you know, our own interest rates will be coming into focus at some point as well. So we are the, the oscillating around one spot 56. One spot 56 has been an incredibly important level for a number of months, and uh, today is not going to be any different. So keep your eye on that. So make sure you don't miss out on that GDP figure going to be a big, big bit of data, loads of people waiting for that. Keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your later going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.